Queen Isabella I, 1451 to 1504 CE. Quick portrait. Tough, physically and mentally strong, astute politician, the first really powerful woman Renaissance ruler in Europe. Reorganized the governmental system, brought the rural crime rate down substantially, religiously very strongly Catholic and Christian, started the Spanish Inquisition, politically very concerned to unite the lands of Spain under a Christian-only banner, and to reform and purify the corrupt church and local noblemen of Spain, financially concerned to bring in money from the New World of the Americas and elsewhere, imperially aimed to invade and conquer North Africa, which did not happen, however, united Castile and Aragon in her marriage to Ferdinand II, thereby creating an almost unified Catholic Christian Spain, sponsored Renaissance artists and scholars. At this time, Spain ruled Naples in southern Italy as well as Sicily, so the relationship with the Italian Renaissance artists was close. 1492 seized Granada and the Alhambra, the last Spanish province still ruled by a Muslim dynasty, ending a 700 to 800 year era of convivencia among the three religions. 1492 decreed that all Jews and Muslims were to convert to Christianity or leave Spain immediately, creating a mass exodus to North Africa and the East. 1492 sponsored Christopher Columbus's expedition westward, exploitation of the West Indies. At her birth, Isabella was second in the line of succession to her father, King John II of Castile, following her older half-brother Henry, who became king when their father died in 1454. Isabella was raised by her mother until 1457, when the two children were brought to court by Henry. Isabella was three. Isabella was well-educated. She learned reading, writing, and the basics of the humanist trivium and quadrivium, and also spent time outdoors doing sports, riding horses, and even practicing martial arts such as swordsmanship. As queen later, she took personal interest in military maneuvers and went on horseback with her troops at times. Her tutors included Beatrice Galindo, 1465 to 1535 CE, a professor at the University of Salamanca in philosophy, rhetoric, and medicine. Isabella later appointed Beatrice as tutor to her own children, four of whom became queens in their own right eventually. Isabella, at the age of 18, married Ferdinand of Aragon, a second cousin, in October 1469 without Henry's approval. Isabella promised in writing to share power equally with Ferdinand once she was Queen of Castile, and so for the first time in many centuries, almost all of Spain would be brought under one royal house. Castile and Aragon were the two largest provinces in Spain. Isabella and Ferdinand were the first actual queen and king of unified Spain. Isabella was crowned Queen of Castile five years later on 13 December 1474. The Catholic monarchs, as they were called, had many domestic policies they tried to institute. Among their top priorities was the reorganization of the governmental system of Spain and the establishment of a governmentally sponsored police force, La Santa Hermandad, the Holy Brotherhood, made up of local citizens who would be paid for their efforts to bring down the rate of literal highway robbery, which had been sky high due to the constant wars and skirmishes being fought throughout the kingdoms for centuries. Local nobles were acting entirely in their own interests and had little loyalty to a central government. This led to local abuses and terrorizing of peasants and citizens of the countryside by Christian nobles and landlords with small private armies. The new royal police force was paid for by a tax paid by households in each area. Isabella also examined the kingdom's finances, realizing with alarm that her older brother Henry's kingship had left Castile with a lot of debt, cleverly buying back estates Henry had sold at a reasonable price so they could be rented and taxed, 
plus halting the overproduction of coinage and establishing mints as a royal monopoly, Isabella addressed the situation. In addition, Isabella took her humanist education very seriously. She was a generous patron of scholars and artists, establishing educational institutions and building a large collection of Spanish and Flemish artworks. Part of her collection still survives today. Queen Isabella I surrounded herself with rich, powerful, and well-connected Spanish women who could collaborate in her humanistic project to adapt Spanish society to the political and social principles of the Renaissance. For instance, Luisa Medrano, 1484-1527, first woman professor at the University of Salamanca, and Francisca Nebrija, daughter of Antonio Nebrija, author of the first Castilian grammar, Francisca, a scholar in her own right, took over her father's chair of rhetoric at the University of Alcalá de Henares when he retired. Beatriz Galindo, Isabella's Latin tutor, nicknamed La Latina because of this, was a key member of this group and remained a close friend and advisor to Isabella throughout their lives. Beatriz was a great sponsor in her own right of charitable religious foundations in Madrid, including a hospital for the poor and two convents. Sadly, Isabella's openness to humanism did not include any openness to religions other than her own. She spent much of her rule trying to stamp out Islam and Judaism within Spain. Her and Ferdinand's Islamophobia and anti-Semitism cost many lives and also, scholars argue, weakened the economic position of Spain within Europe, ultimately. Both Isabella and Ferdinand were fervent Catholic Christians, interested in the reform of the lay clergy as well as monks, friars, and nuns church representatives who had become too worldly, keeping their money and family, social, political connections, despite living in a convent or monastery. Isabella took a particular interest in the reform of the poor clares, an order of Franciscan nuns who had a vow of poverty that was not being observed very strictly. Like other reformers, Isabella wanted to stop clergy and church judges from taking bribe money, reintroduce stricter religious dietary and clothing rules for those in convents and monasteries, and generally isolate the church more from politics and money. Beginning in 1482, Isabella and Ferdinand had been fighting against the last Islamic ruling family in Spain, the Nasri dynasty, which had founded and ruled over Granada, home of the Alhambra palace and fortress, for over two and a half centuries, since 1230 CE. In 1492, Isabella and Ferdinand, with their army, won a decisive battle at Granada and dis expelled both Muslims and Jews from Spain by decree. As many as 100,000 died over the course of the 10-year military campaign. After the takeover, about 20,000 Muslim Spaniards from Granada fled, mainly to North Africa, since the Alhambra decree specified that both Jews and Muslims were to convert or leave Spain on pain of death. Later in 1492, the Italian explorer Christopher Columbus visited the Queen and Ferdinand at the beautiful Alhambra Palace, which they'd settled into after expelling the Nasrids, seeking royal approval for his planned voyage to India. Isabella financed it. He sailed west only to stumble upon the Americas instead. He and his men, men pillaged and massacred and took slaves back with them to Spain. Columbus presented the monarchs with Native American slaves as a gift. Isabella demanded that they be released and established that indigenous people should be treated as subjects of the crown of Castile and should not be enslaved in most situations. Sadly, this demand for just rule over indigenous people was not respected. The extreme abuse and exploitation of Native Americans in the service of pulling as much wealth out of the continent as possible continued and grew for centuries afterwards. Isabella was also keen to convert the Native Americans to Christianity, which sent mixed signals to the abusers. Queen Isabella died at only 53 years old.
Isabella's will, the only writing that she left, summarizes what she thought were her reign's achievements as well as her wishes for the future. The unity of the Iberian Peninsula, maintenance of control over the Strait of Gibraltar, a policy of expansion into Muslim North Africa, just rule for the Indians of the New World, and reform in the Spanish Church. Was Isabella a good queen? A good person? Fortunately, we don't have to decide these questions about her. She was, in some ways, ahead of her time, a strong woman wielding power and creating a new reality within the Iberian Peninsula. Many of her subjects at the time idolized her, and until the 1970s there was even a movement within the Catholic Church to have her declared a saint. Some of her aims we can sympathize easily with. She wanted to build up education and the arts. She tried to defend poor Spaniards from being taken advantage of by predatory nobles. She instituted anti-corruption measures and church reforms and aimed to unify the country and make it more peaceful. Other aims of hers are horrifying and difficult for us to understand. Consistent policies of persecution of non-Christians, anti-Semitic and Islamophobic wars, the institution of the Spanish Inquisition, the expulsion of Jews and Muslims from Spain, and the aggressive expansion into new overseas markets and exploitation of the inhabitants of the New World. She was a queen who certainly left her stamp on Spain and on Europe through policy, through military battles, and through family networks across several continents that continued for centuries after she died. She was a sponsor of humanist arts and education, and yet she was also, paradoxically, relentless in her attempts to stamp out the mix of cultures in Spain that had originally brought the spark of humanism to Europe.